I'm Vanessa Ruck, the girl on a bike, and going into rally racing, it can be a little bit unsure of what kit you should be wearing. So here, I'm gonna give you a bit of a run through, head to toe of all the gear that I am using, trusting, and taking with me when I go off into the desert and out on some rallies. what it is to get dressed for a rally and some of the kit that I'm using. So hopefully this won't be too painful a process because uh, I very often put things on in the wrong order. Like I'll put my knee frames on before I put my shorts on and my shorts don't go over the top of my knee frames. So I've got my feet, I've got some Alpine Tars Tech 7s, I've got a Hebo helmet which I find nice and light and a key modification on this is a Liat in the mouth bladder extension. It means that as I'm riding along, the water is right there on my lips whenever I want it. It does sit just by my mouth. I don't find it annoying at all and I can just reach, grab the nipple. So one thing worth mentioning about these goggles is that they have an infinite optic film on them. So you can see there's a little layer on the top. That is a scratch resistant layer, which means as I'm riding along and I get dusty, I do not need to worry about wiping my goggles because they won't scratch. An amazing thing. They basically do it for the majority of the big goggle brands. It's not expensive and it will actually make your goggles last a lot longer. The sucky thing and I can have water and stay hydrated. I've got the Scott Prospect light sensitive goggles, which means as you go into the woods, they go clearer when you come out into the sunshine, they go darker. And I find that's a really good way to have my vision. And I've always got my intercom. When you have road liaisons, I quite like to put my music on and I just generally always ride with my intercom. So it lives on my helmet. I've got a, a little rucksack. This obviously holds my bladder, it holds my tools and it holds my camera batteries. Uh, I don't think there's much key on this, but something I particularly like about this bag is the fact that I've got two little zip pockets right on the front here, which I can do right now. So I have my food, which is in here. I always put my energy gels, which are the SIS electrolytes, in this front pocket because when I'm on a little bit of easier track or maybe a little bit of road section going through a village, I can actually unzip that with one hand whip out an energy, get it up into my mouth, rip the top off and have some on the go and it's just really handy. Haven't got the best way to attach my number, cable ties, winner. So on my knees I've got the some knee frames because I don't want my knees to going in the wrong direction and then base layers are really really important. So you can see I've got the leggings on already, these are like a, a technical sweat wicking base layer so I'll take my shorts off and add my top. Um, so this again is the top version. The key thing with riding in the heat, this is the same for the Tunisia Desert Challenge, is that actually having a technical layer on your skin is the best way to stay cool. And obviously if you're riding in colder environments, that technical base layer is gonna give you warmth as well and a slightly different material fiber. But this keeps the sweat wicking off you and keeps you cool. So I wear that full ninja mode. I've then got socks. Socks are, I guess, are kind of personal. I really get on with the, what are they, seal skins, merino, the same ones I'd wear snowboarding or out hiking. They are thick wool, but wool is a very good temperature modulating fiber. So I get on with them and they're nice and long so I don't get any creases or anything or any sliding down in my boots. It's quite a process getting dressed. Then we are going to go to the bottom. Now I've talked about my uh, rally bum which amazingly isn't too sore this week because of that amazing saddle. But I do always wear cycling padded shorts. So they're next, get them on. And I always like layer overlap so that things don't move. Okay, and then the knee frames are going on. Gotta get them on the right knees and all the Velcros. Mm -mm -mm. Kind of tired before you've even got on the bike, just from getting dressed. And this is in hot weather. I know a lot of people that don't wear knee frames and I kind of have taken the decision that preventative body protection is always the best option. And these are designed to help hopefully prevent my knee going in any direction that it shouldn't go. They do cost a bit of money, but money up front is a lot of money saved by not being off work or on crutches again had too much crutches time in my past. Okay, now probably need some trousers. Let's go for some trousers. Uh, so what have I got? These are Moscow Trailsman trousers. They're slightly ADV kind of focused, but I've actually found they are the coolest trousers 
not cool like I'm really cool, I'm in cool temperature. Uh, coolest trousers for rally, I suppose. I wore these in Tunisia, and I think the reason why they're so cool is because they're really heavily ventilated. Trying to multitask, talk and get dressed. So you can see all the vents, even the pockets have like ventilated backing to them, all the vents. They're really comfortable. Not gonna do them up because I need tops. So I then have the Alpine Stars body armor. And this is, I believe a level, I believe it's a level one. Probably shouldn't give you, yeah, level one protection. So I've got big elbows, big shoulder, nice big chest plate and the back. Now I've only recently started wearing the Alpine Stars one. I was wearing uh, the Liat one before and I discovered this one in a shop and it is probably 30% lighter than the Liat one and this thing which I thought was a bit granny like it's lovely it kind of holds you and also keeps a little bit of a waist and holds holds it all together anyway I then got a, a jersey I'll get that on you can see I do have a little bit of a mix of kit because I've tried to find the kit that, you know, works for me. Everything's a different brand, but it's comfortable for me and it's what feels good. Now I can do my trousers up. Okay, I then have a next nude, which is really dusty. Uh, I've got the Gnarik Rally one on because I got it free in my goodie bag. I don't know if you're like me, but I've got a drawer of these things. I've probably got about 50 snoods at home, but anyway, I think we already talked about feet. Um, there's always something in my boots. Yep. Pop them on. And then, I think we've just got hands left, haven't we? There's no frog in my boots right now, though. Okay, right, one more boot. Ugh. So, I also ride with a bum bag. Um, oh, my tools are in my rucksack. But the bum bag I have around the front, Patsy Quick told me this, if you wear your bum bag at the front, it's no weight. It sits on your hip bones and you don't even feel it's there. It doesn't bounce around. And if you fall off, it's not gonna smash into your lower back. So I wear that on the front and that has my germaline. I wish I was sponsored by germaline, but this is basically an antiseptic cream. Amazing for your lips. Get rid of the lip solve, just use a little bit of this and you won't get chappy, disgusting rally lips. Look, they're listening. Germaline, guys, it's magic. And then I have my energy bars and all that kind of stuff, my money, money, my passport. Um, uh, gloves, so little palm savers. Someone told me once, if you need palm savers, your body weight's not right. I argue that if you're on the bike for eight to 10 hours for six days, no skin's that tough to give yourself a favor. They're tiny little, what are they? A service things, they're about six quid. Mad how much that helps your hands. And then we've got some gloves, standard little Dura gloves. Um, and then you rest. What I always like to do is try and get rid ready so I've got at least five minutes to just go, oh, before I then hustle onto the bike and get to the start line. That's me dressed. <laughs> Protection, versatile, pocket for my phone. Oh, ears, they're in here. There we go. These, these little things are important. So I've got some custom molded earplugs. So that is the shape of my ear, minus the hair. And what I've definitely realized, when you're at university or at school or just being young going to clubs, when you got home from the end of a club, you'd have that like sort of ringing in your ears from the noise intensity. And it's exactly the same from the wind damage that you get on a motorcycle. There's a lot of old bikers who have bad hearing. So check your hearing, it doesn't cost that much and you'll thank yourself later. So I always whack them in. And I actually find that when I first started wearing them, it threw my balance a bit because your hearing is part of your senses. But now I actually think I ride faster when I have them in because it gets rid of some of the like noise. Anyway, I am dressed and I'm ready to race. So there you have it. That is a head to toe of what I am comfortable in on the rally. So let me know if you have any questions. I'm always willing to give you some of the input that I've got from my experience. Obviously, every single body is different, so you need to find the kit that works for you. Hopefully you found this video useful. Do please tick the little bell so you get notifications because there's loads more videos like this, including actual full on rallies, trips to Iceland, all kinds of stuff, so you won't miss those videos in the future. I'm Vanessa Ruck, the girl on a bike. Thanks so much for watching.